Welcome to the first Global Debate and Public Policy Challenge webinar. This short video is meant to help you prepare your policy memo. So take a close look and get ready to submit your memo by the 30th of November. We will look into four areas that are relevant for the first task. We will cover the basics of a policy memo. We will then go into more detail and explain which are the key elements of a good memo. We will also discuss the importance of citing sources properly to prevent plagiarism. And finally, we will go through the submission guidelines and talk about length, font size, and how to submit your memo. In the first round of this year's challenge, we ask you to write a policy memo which addresses a hypothetical scenario on the topic of digital freedom and its limits. Specifically, your task is to Choose one of the four scenarios provided on the GDPPC website. Outline the nature of the problem of the chosen scenario. Argue for the adoption of your chosen approach to solving the problem. And finally, to propose a set of practical recommendations for action by policymakers. This is your chance to address issues that are growing in relevance each day, such as internet privacy, freedom of expression, government censorship, and internet freedom in general. In this challenge, you can make a case for why your ideas are the right ones and for you to defend your options using evidence-based arguments. So, don't be afraid to be vivid and bold. To get started, let's first explain what a policy memo is. A policy memorandum, or policy memo, is a document that helps policymakers to better understand an issue and to make an informed decision. Policy memos communicate information that drives the choices and negotiations of our decision makers in government. Policy memos are persuasive, evidence-based, analytical, and structured. They are written in a way that those who are not experts on the topic can easily follow. And policy memos should be clear, concise, and immediately get to the point. Think of it this way. A policy memo is likely to be pressed into someone's hand as he or she hurries down the corridor or glances at the document while making a phone call. Now let's turn to the key elements of a good policy memo before going into detail on each. There are five points worth highlighting. A good memo is policy and problem oriented, analysis driven, evidence based, it offers viable recommendations, and it is well-structured and coherent. Your memo needs to be problem and policy oriented. This means you need to orient your thinking to real-world problems when referring to the scenario you choose. When choosing your scenario, don't just opt for the most feasible one to write about. This is your chance to take part in writing about something you care for and where you want your voice to be heard. So write about the scenario that excites you the most Think about what you want to contribute to the theme of digital freedom and use this as an opportunity for you to also learn about something new in the process. Make the most of it. Your memo needs to be analysis driven. It's important to remember that your memo needs to be backed by facts and evidence. And your memo analyzes the problem or the issue at stake by taking into account the following questions. What is the current state of affairs on the issue you're addressing? What is being done, including what is working and what is not? What are the alternatives to addressing the problem? And why is your recommended option or options the best path forward? Credible evidence makes a good policy memo. The analysis and recommendations contained in your policy memo should be based on evidence, ideally, from multiple reputable sources. Why? Because it is important to demonstrate that claims are well-founded and not based on opinion alone. Credible arguments for a certain course require evidence and examples to be convincing. How? Read widely to support your arguments and look for credible sources Search for primary sources and make your own analysis instead of relying on others for this. It is important that you cite all sources used. Your memo should offer viable recommendations. 
Broadly speaking, the goal of a policy memo is threefold. Highlight the problem, analyze the current state of affairs, and argue for a specific course of action. In terms of developing recommendations, check that they are feasible and practical, defend why your chosen recommendations are better than the alternative, and explain what concrete actions must be taken to achieve the wanted goal. Make sure you have a well-structured and coherent memo. Finding a sensible structure to present your ideas is an important part of the writing process. You need to guide your target audience through the paper by making sure all sections and arguments are well-structured, logically developed, and focus on the topic. To achieve this, your memo should have a clear and convincing title that communicates your key message and the need for change. Usually 10 words or less is ideal. A description of the problem and proposition of the preferred policy. Describe the issues that the government in your chosen scenario must address at the very beginning of your memo. A main text where you provide a comparative analysis of policy options, a discussion of their impact, and a justification of the proposed policy. Concluding remarks that briefly summarize the document as a whole. And finally, a reference list at the end of the memo that cites all sources used. Citation and plagiarism oftentimes cause much confusion and questions. It is not difficult, though, if you follow the advice below. First of all, reference your sources. When you find a good report or newspaper article, cite it. When you find the argument of someone else compelling, show that it is not your thought, but cite the source. Use the APA embedded citation. It is quite simple. You provide shortened information on the sources in parentheses in the text and give the full reference with all required details in the reference list at the end of your memo. And finally, go to our website to find out more about the APA citation. It is important to cite properly because using the writings and thoughts of others without referencing them is considered plagiarism. Here's a quote from the Central European University Guideline on Plagiarism. So, make sure to reference properly. The judges will review your memo for plagiarism. Now let's move to the last part, writing and submitting your memo. When you prepare your policy memo, make sure it is consistent with the submission guidelines. Make sure that it is between 800 to 1,200 words long, but not including the list of sources consulted or the bibliography. When you upload your policy memo, it should be in Word or PDF format and in a font no smaller than 11 point. Use APA embedded citation and include a page number on each of the pages. Put your code number and not your name on each of the pages. This is the code that you receive when you register for the challenge. And make sure to check for spelling and grammar before sending in your policy memo. You can find all this information in more detail by visiting the GDPPC website at www.gdppc.idebate.org. You can also contact us if you have any questions when preparing your first policy memo by writing to us at questions at gdppc.org. We wish you the best of luck with writing your memo. This is a unique opportunity for you to participate and write about something you care for and where your voice truly matters. This is also a chance for you to meet a group of interesting people and to build new friendships around the world. And you can be one of up to five participants receiving a $10,000 scholarship or grant. So don't miss the deadline for your registration and the submission of your policy memo. Remember, it's 30th of November, 2012.